because that's what I'm here for today. And I hope, Sting, I hope you got the guts and the intestinal fortitude to last with Dick Slater in that ring because I am the true master when it comes to delivering pain and blues. Now, Sting, you're looking for a wrestling match. I'm going to give you a little one, but then I'm going after a piece of your body. And when I get done with you today, Sting, in front of the whole world, they're going to be calling him something else. And I like to say it, but I don't think I can get it out. <laughs> Do you understand while the nation watches the devious plan of JTEX Corporation is going to begin to happen right before your eyes? I promised you that Flair and Sting would be eliminated. What? Could this be the day? Don't leave your television sets because very, very soon, Dickie Slater is going to take you to the land of mayhem, pain, and torture. And let me tell you, I would rather be in the ring with a gorilla than Dickie Slater the way he feels today. All right, fans, coming up, Brad Armstrong and the Cuban assassin, the big man Sting and Slater, later in the hour. Vocabulary too. All the hits in the distant edition is all brand new. You're through. I'm at the planetary and life doctor. Who? 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 So who? Fuck your beef. No relief. I step on stage. Girls scream like I'm Keith. What's up, everybody? Ringtime Pro Wrestling is at it again. Keith is in the building. Next week, it will be Keith and Keisha because we will be together to preview WWE Evolution, the first ever all women's pay per view. We could not do that preview without the lady of the house, the first lady of Ringtown Pro Wrestling. Keisha will be back in the saddle for a special episode. <laughs> but without further ado, we are going to go on and recap. A wonderful week of professional wrestling. And it was loaded. A lot going on. Uh, WWE uh, premiered the NXT UK show uh, that will air every week. Coming out on Wednesday. Just like the regular NXT. It's just that this one will come out about five hours earlier. Because the UK is five hours ahead. So basically they're releasing at 8 o'clock UK time. So... I'm sorry, I heard a Microsoft error in my ear. Yeah, sorry everybody, I just had an issue with Internet Explorer. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Continue this show. Because apparently my Internet Explorer got damaged. There we go. Whew. It's one of those things like you get those errors in your ear and it's hard to do a podcast when somebody's talking to you and it's telling you, hey, your Microsoft Internet Explorer is jacked up. And hey, come pay us some money so you can get this fixed. Hell no. I work at IT. I know that's the scale. Uh, can't understand how it happened to Internet Explorer. Don't really use that browser that much, but I was using it for something real quick. Never mind. So let's get into the show. So we're going to talk Battle for Glory. Why are we talking Battle for Glory? Because it's the biggest show in Impact Wrestling. Now, that being said, we don't really talk Impact on this show anymore. Uh, it has fell by the wayside because, I'll say this nicely, oh, we only got so much time in our week to watch wrestling. We only talk about so many things on the show. So, it was like, hey, do I have enough time to cover all of this stuff? So, what would fall by the wayside? That tends to be impact. Um, 
also because it's, they've done a poor job in some of the things they've done. I mean, we probably stopped covering Impact Heavy before the Dixie Carter era ended. So, it's, it's kind of been a while, right? But, let's have a little bit of talk here. Bob Fagori happened. Uh, I'm just going to give you a brief skim over. A lot of this show is going to be skim over because a lot of the resources will be dedicated to SmackDown. Because we're going to talk about the thousand episode of SmackDown. And I'll give you this brief history lesson. Uh, why is the show significant? Uh, why 1,000 episodes is such a monumental achievement? So, we'll go into that. Let's talk about for glory. Um, the opening match was pretty solid. Uh, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, uh, defeated Max Seidel and Ethan Page. Uh, Eli Drake. Defeated James Ellsworth in a two-minute singles match. Shout out to Ellsworth. That dude is finding the wrestling checks anywhere. Uh, I think he's going to be featured at WrestleCade uh, coming up next month in North Carolina. Not sure if Ringtime will go to WrestleCade or not. Um, that's still kind of up in the air. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Tessa Blanchard defended her title against Taya Valkyrie. Keeping that knockouts women's title. Uh, I think if she continues to have a good run with that, that will pay off big later. Uh, really, let's get to the main event. And it's kind of funny. This show, it's not a lot of time. Like, none of the matches really took that long. Like, the opening match was 12 minutes. You got a 10 minutes match with Tessa. So, 13 minute match uh, with Ohio versus everything. And against Brian Cage, Phoenix, and Pentagon Jr. The main event is 21 minutes. And that's what we came to talk about. Austin Aries is an asshole. And that's, that's how I titled it in the notes. I really didn't need any other, uh, how do I say, any other description besides that. For those of you who don't know who Austin Aries is, Austin Aries is a supremely talented young man who has wrestled all over the world. He has wrestled in just about every promotion that you can talk about. This is his second stint with Impact Wrestling. He had two stints with Ring of Honor. He had a stint with the WWE recently. Uh, worked at NXT and then got to the 205 thing. Talented, but I'm not talking out of school when people say he's kind of a prick backstage. Uh, his contract apparently was ending with Impact Wrestling and he was not re-signed. Uh, he was dropping the world title to John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny Impact or Impact because he likes to change his last name, I guess, to the show he's on. Uh, but anyway, Johnny uh, defeats him. He hits the, fight, the shooting star press. Everything seems normal. Then uh, Austin Aries pops up right after the finish and walks off. Basically, totally no selling to finish. I get wrestling is not, quote unquote, it's scripted. I get it. I get that you guys like to use the term fake. I don't really like to use fake because I think fake is not an accurate description of wrestling. I think it's predetermined outcomes is better for me. And I say that because... You ain't probably never been power bomb before, but there's a, there's a level of fake that's not really happening, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff that happens in that ring that people just have to take. So, I'm not going to call it fake. The injuries are real. The guys bust their ass every night to do a job and to entertain fans. That being said, if you are a part of that brotherhood, to no sell the it's just completely unprofessional. Like, I don't care what your problems is with impact. I, this show has largely stopped covering Impact because we hate the way they do things. That being said, you walked off. You still got a check for the last show. You got paid. You took the money. So you went out there. You did what you were supposed to do. But then at the end of the match, you decided to be an ass. You flip off the guys, the producers, uh, Don Callis. I think they said your, your, your middle finger was directed at. Whatever. I can't believe... Because here's the thing. There's going to be somebody who gives this asshole a job. He's probably already signed somewhere. He'll go overseas. He'll do some things. People will get, still give him work. And it's not... 
you got to take a stand at some point. And I know the internet is a little bit of a buzz. Like, is it work? Is it a shoot? Da da da. I don't care. I really don't. And to be honest with you, let's say it's a shoot. And I'm using air quotes that you can't see on a podcast. <sighs> what does that get old? What does that get lame? Right? Like we're always trying to look for, is this to shoot? Is this is real? Uh, nah, man. Y'all just getting laughed at by people who in the business. Nah, man. You know what we should, we should shoot for? When something is legit and nobody has to explain it. Nobody has to say, oh, yeah, that's, that's this or it's that. We watch it, we love it, and we bond to it. That's all. If it's spiraling out of genuine emotion, that's fine. But don't piss on a show, piss on everything that everybody else in that locker room has worked for. Because even if you got a problem with the promotion, there's other guys on the show. So, I don't know. I don't know. But that's it. Um. NXT UK debuted. So, let's get back to that. Positive stuff. Mark Andrews reminds me of Sami Zayn. Uh, he took the job like Sami too, but kind of reminds me of Sami Zayn. Uh, Mustache Mountain talks about tag team titles. I think they'll probably be a big time contender. Tyler Bate, I think, is probably one of the biggest stars in this promotion. Behind, of course, Pete Dunne, who was carrying the water for two years. And finally, they have a show for him. Uh, Dave and Steve B. Sid Scala One thing I liked about the show I don't know how much UK wrestling a lot of people watch Here stateside But I watched a little bit And uh, I watched a lot of classic UK wrestling So I'll say this It, it, it had a even, It had a WWE feel to it But it also had Some things that were strikingly UK About it And I liked it the guys weren't monstrously huge. There was not like a steroid feel to the show. Um, watching a guy like Dave Mastiff, I've seen those guys in UK wrestling all the time. Those uh, bowling ball, fire hydrant kind of guys. Um, I thought the match between Tony Storm and Nita Samuels was pretty good also. That had a little bit of a WWE feel to it. Uh, like Nigel on commentary. Give you a guy who grew up there and has the experience and has the heroes and can give you points of reference. I think that's very helpful in a show for a crowd that may be new to the style, new to the, the names. When they see somebody, why is that guy important? Why does that guy matter? Why does that guy matter to the history of wrestling in this country? Because we're talking about a different country. So, what I think it's going to give. A chance for the WWE fans to get educated on something different. I think having a fresh new product is going to be beneficial for the company. I think it's good for the WWE Network to have something else to air. So all around, I thought it was a good debut. And it was worth watching. So, shouts out to that for the uh, UK. So now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this show. Raw. Three hour Raw. And I, I want to emphasize there's a three hour walk because it's three hours every Wednesday. And why does that matter versus the show that happened the night after? And we'll get to that. But it opens up with Seth Rollins. Uh, he took on Drew McIntyre uh, so he could qualify for the, uh, what is it, the World Cup at Crown Jewel? I just had it listed too because I was just. You should see my notes. It has it written three different ways. But basically, you know, the greatest in the World Cup that's going to take place at Crown Jewel, the eight-man tournament, uh, that Randy Orton, John Cena have already qualified for. Uh, <laughs> legendary guys. Kurt Angle has qualified. Jeff Hardy, I think, is already in. So we got to fill out some more spots. So this week, Seth Rollins, who defeated Drew McIntyre. Uh, via count out there was some help from Dean Ambrose because Dolph Ziggler got involved and that thing is still going uh, Nia Jax and Ember Moon defeated 
Dana Brooke and Tamita in a tag team match, which was interesting because Tamita was back. It was, I thought her return didn't get quite the love it deserved, but it was good to see her back in the ring. Uh, Emperor and Nia won the match, but the underlying theme after that was the Battle Royal. So there's going to be a Battle Royal at Evolution. And Nia will be participating along with Ember, along with Tamina, along with Dana Brooke. So after the match, hey, Tamita t- threw Nia out the ring. Ember moved and Tamita got into it. And then Dana Brooke got the both out. Left as the last woman standing. Just to kind of get a, of a preview of what to expect. Uh, a lot of these ladies will be trying to you know, jockey for position and to get to each other's heads before this battle royal. Uh, the show Evolution promises to be stacked. So, a lot is going to be going on. Uh, one thing I would like to bring attention to is probably the promo that was most interesting from the week. And that was the Bella Twins and Ronda Rousey. Uh, Rousey is probably not the greatest talker, which is something she's going to work on. She's going to get better. Expect that. Uh, I, I'm going to find it interesting to see how this all plays out with her, Nikki and Bree, and, you know, just see how this goes, heading into evolution. But Rousey did all right on the mic. And I don't know if this was scripted or if this was just her talking. I think it was off the dome. I think they may have gave her some points. But she nailed it. Oh my god. Because the funny thing about this being scripted is if somebody gave her that, that's how they feel backstage. See, when y'all worried about what's a shoot and what's real, understand this. Somebody feels that shit. And you guys are like, what do they feel? I'm going to play it for you. It, 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 it's some heat. You've heard them, you've smelled them, but you've never met them. But I hate that ads play on YouTube prior to uh, being able to uh, share a video. Oh my God, I hate YouTube. I don't say I hate YouTube. I love YouTube, but I, I, I don't like what it's become with the ads. That's all. Anyway... Listen to this promo. We'll talk about it. It's all you, Rhonda. And let's let me know you're going to come up here and break our arms. You know what, guys? I tried. I tried my best. To be respectful. I really did. I I knew that the WWE was, was your territory first. And and I really tried not to be judgmental, even though everything that the Divas era stood for made me sick to my stomach. I, I tried my best to give you the benefit of a doubt that you were just doing the best you could with what you had. And so when you guys came running up to me after my WrestleMania performance, when we had barely said more than a hello to each other before, I thought, like, wow, how, how cool of these ladies. I mean, how, how great of them to be so accepting and, and so excited for me being here. You know, I, I thought we could really be, like, sister soldiers and pursue the same goal, that we could be driving forces in the women's evolution together. But that was my mistake. I was too idealistic, I was too naive to see that you guys are the embodiment of a stereotype. DMBs, do nothing Bellas. You guys weren't there to support me, you were there because there was a camera pointed at me and never in my life have I seen such desperation for attention. I mean, the only thing you guys have ever done that has impressed me is how far you were actually able to go with the absolute minimum amount of talent. You leech 
marched off of the names of your men. You plagiarize and dilute their movesets. You're not pioneers, you're a callous. You're relics of the past waiting to be eviscerated like smallpox. Oh, but you guys, the wait is over because you both know that I could rip your arms off and beat you with them. My mic wasn't on. Okay, I was pausing it because I wanted to come back to this promo. All right. She said that you plagiarized your mate's movesets and then diluted them. Damn. Okay. And yes, it is exactly what they did. They took the best of what they... You can tell their whole style changed upon who each one was, their significant other was. I'll say this. Damn. Okay. The crowd was cheering feverishly because that's what they all were thinking. Now, maybe the Bellas have self-awareness and know that, like, hey, that's how they got over, man. And they willing to deal with that. Willing to say thanks. But, ooh. I would not, if I was them, I wouldn't go to any comment section about this anytime soon. But uh, I'm going to let Rhonda finish talking because she got some more heat. And this was pretty good. So. The only thing that's going to be stopping at me, the only thing that's going to be stopping me at Evolution is going to be the referee and everyone knows they're not very good at holding me back. But you know, I am much more than a pretty face with a deadly body. I will ruin you. Regardless of how much money is poured into marketing you, I will make the name Bella into a four-letter word that will be remembered as the societal sore it always has been. Okay, okay. So you think we're talentless? You think we're a disease? You think we're do-nothing Bellas? Yes, yes. Uh, apparently, most people think that you are talentless. And most people think you are do nothing bellless. Now, don't get me wrong. The company has put a lot of money into marketing. They are very valuable to the company. I think there is a lot in the name Bella. But, ah, uh, this is getting interesting. Anyone who thinks that sounds really jealous of us. I mean, come on, Rhonda. The word Bella has done more last week worldwide than you have your entire career here. You're welcome. I also, entirely inaccurate. Entirely. But they're heels. So, just got to remember, heels have to talk as if what they're saying is real. But, it's the reason why Ronda Rousey had the world title after being there for like eight days. It's because that name is way more marketable. Like, as many Instagram followers and stuff the Bellas probably have, I'm pretty sure Ronda Rousey has more. But we'll continue. This is fun. I mean, Ronda, we are the ground breakers. We have broken more barriers than you ever have. We have knocked down more doors. You don't even compare to us at all. Knock down doors. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. Knock down doors. My entire career, I've been knocking down doors. I've knocked down doors in judo. I knocked down doors in strike force. I knocked down doors in the UFC. And now I'm knocking down doors here at home in the WWE. The only door you ever 
ever knocked down was the door to John Cena's bedroom. World star! Okay. That was hilarious. That right there, I think, is going to be the quote of the week. Basically, like, damn. All you... It did seem like Nikki Bella's career got got a boost when she got with the boss. Okay, and I'm not saying Cena was the boss. I'm saying, at the time, they started dating. I mean, it was towards the end, but Cena was still very much John. I mean, he's still John Cena. Like, he still has enough cachet and clout that you can... Put like this. When Roxy release time was coming, they weren't releasing her, or they weren't releasing her sister, who happened to be with... Daniel Bryan, who, man, if you came around Daniel after 2014, you were on fire. So, yeah, man, it stings. You got to burn. And I like what we're doing here. So, they're not just a contrast of styles. This is a contrast of ethos. I am taking... The women who represent the they're the last vestige of the divas era. And I give the Bellas credit because they continue to per- persevere once the evolution came. When the evolution came, they adapted and didn't get totally washed out. But they are the epitome of what the divas era was, right? They came towards the end of it, they really wasn't a part of the, the foundation of it, but they were the poster children by the end. And that's why, like I said, you have a totally different ethos. Ronda Rousey. Uh, now, there's part that people can say that, hey, she was handed some things. She was gifted some things. No. What she was was based on her reputation. Like, she couldn't come in because she's built up so much outside. She couldn't come in and just learn the thing. She had to be ready to be at the top. And so far, so good. She is a true fighter. Like, she can fight for real. She is a Olympic medalist as a judo player. I uh, hope I'm saying that right for my martial arts people. Uh, she is a UFC champion. Like, real fighting. Like, dangerous stuff. So now she's here in the WWE as the most credible person in the division. Because when you see her, you think like, oh wow, she really could rip one of their arms off. Like she could break anybody's arm at will in that division. It is a contrast of, like I said, ethos. Somebody who felt like they legitly earned and beat their way to the top and had to fight and got knocked out on the way up. Versus some people that... uh. The office likes. So we'll see. We'll see how all this goes. But yeah, that, that was probably one of the most interesting promos of the week. Um, Dolph Ziggler defeats Dean Ambrose. Uh, he qualifies for the Crown Jewel Cup. So I, I guess we have to six. Now, there are some other matches that took place on Raw. I am not talking about them. Why? Because they're not really important. Nothing else really happened of importance. But the main event. The Shield uh, will take on Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, and Drew McIntyre. This match comes as the third time these guys will face each other because, of course, uh, Rollins and Ziggler got involved in... Rollins, I'm sorry, and McIntyre got involved in the Ziggler-Ambrose match. Braun showed up. Roman showed up. And it was like, all right, why do we have y'all people always in this thing again? So... What we did, let's have the match again. This is the rubber match. In three weeks, we've had three of these matches. Well, two weeks, really, because you got the crowd. Super Showdown match, won by the Shield. The next night, oh, right not the next night, but two days later on Raw, it comes down to the Drew and Braun and his crew winning. So now we have the third match. And there's tension amongst everybody. The Shield has tension. Dean tired of shit. Uh, Braun tired of Dolph talking. 
Dolph is doing that annoying heel thing where he's like, yeah, man, we gonna do this, we gonna do this. It's like, man, if you don't shut your ass up. All right. And Braun told both of them, hey, if we don't win this match, y'all two go get these hands. That's what's gonna happen. So, that team has had tension over the past two weeks also. And uh, it's really between Braun and Dolph. And Braun tired of Dolph. But Drew, Dolph is his man. That's his partner. That's the guy he came there with. That's the guy he said, yo, we go wreck shop here. Braun's a monstrously big dude. But when Drew stands up to him, the disparity isn't that stark. Like, it's reasonable to think Drew can hold his own against this guy. The match goes. It's going different ways. Different people are having problems. Dean Ambrose almost dirty deeds Seth Rollins. That's how far this shit went. Because miscommunications, people not doing anything, people getting hit, people get hit by mistake. It's going crazy. They kept teasing the steel turn, but that wasn't the turn. Uh, Broad got Claymore kicked by Drew on accident one time. Uh, after the match, Dolph took the pinfall. Braun was out on the outside. It was a lot going on. The Shield won. So the Shield wins the rubber match. All as well as is well with the Shield. They are happy. They, you know, they'll, they'll figure it out between the Bucks them. Uh, Braun lived up to his promise. And told Dolph, you're going to get these hands. Gave him a power slam. He was going to come for Drew. Drew wouldn't have it. Drew hit a Claymore kick on purpose and left Braun dizzied. Now, I think this is wonderful for a few reasons. One, Braun looked like a monster again. I thought they weakened him a little bit when he was with the click. So, being with Drew and Dolph, you know, they made it seem like he needed help. And he started doing like, I mean, I know he's a heel, but even when he was a heel prior to the face turn or whatever, he was a monster heel. He really didn't need a lot of cheap tactics. I thought this brought Braun back. Also, I thought it made Drew very credible. So now Braun and Drew got problems. And they might have to fight it out. And we'll see where it goes. But I think this elevates Drew immediately into sub made of it. Uh, semi made of it. Like he, he might be ready. So this is interesting. And I'm very happy to see it. Uh, with that being said, we're going to take our break. We're going to come back with the news, and we're going to do some SmackDown, and I'm going to go over the legacy and the history and all that stuff. And this is it's kind of funny. So I opened up the show with Dick Slater promo because Dick Slater passed away. So R.I.P. Dick Slater. But in all the craziness of SmackDown and the history of SmackDown, I felt like, hey, we should probably uh, cover. I mean, I needed to go into the annals of this show. And I found something that I thought was funny. I found something that a lot of people might want to forget. But we're going to remember it, and we're going to remember it in gloriousness. Reverend Devon. Oh, but I've been to the mountain 
Okay. We're back. Um, I don't know if that theme song was a W... Like, did the WWE commission that song? Or did they bring somebody in to record an original record? Now, Reverend Devon was an interesting character. Um, he actually walked down to the ring and collected some offering in some cases. Uh, there's video of this. Uh, there was Deacon Batista. This is where Batista had his uh, jump into the main roster from OVW. So they made him Deacon Batista. Uh, that was before the Evolution run. I, I kind of wonder why De- I don't know. It was a big card gimmick. It wasn't supposed to get over too much, but just to give you some history of what went on in SmackDown. But uh, I'm going to do birthdays. We're going to do news. And other than that, that's it, man. Uh, and then we'll do SmackDown. So it is the 19th of October. Man, 2018 is almost gone. And if you live in the metro Atlanta area, yes, somebody has cut off the heat. When you wake up in the morning, you got to have a hoodie. The only problem is midday, you might need to have on a t-shirt. But it works out because by the time you come in in the evening again, you need another hoodie. So I work 10 to 7. So when I get up in the morning and go to work, I'm like, hey, it is cold. By the time I go to lunch, I'm like, oh, it is warm. By the time I leave work, I'm like, it is cold again. Very weird. Wake up. It's kind of dark. Uh, by the time I get home, it is very dark. So, a lot going on. But let's get to the birthdays. Uh, yesterday, the 18th, Simon Gotch, uh, one half of the Vaudevillians um, with Aiden English, celebrated birthday. Gotch turned 36. Uh, the Berserker, John Nord, celebrated birthday. Um, today, Tony Storm, tomorrow, the 20th. Now, that gets interesting. Chavo Guerrero will be celebrating a birthday tomorrow. Chavo turns 48. Um, Scott Hall will be celebrating his birthday tomorrow, October 20th on a Saturday. Scott Hall will turn 60. Give it up for Scott Hall, man. Woo! Um, that's one guy who I think we're all proud of for getting to 60. And he's going to be a healthy 60, man. He's going to be, you know, vibrant 60. Because Scott has a few rough years, man. After the downfall of WCW and stuff like that. I was happy he, got, he started getting his life back together, man. Very very happy for the man. So that's that. Um, let's go into the news. John Cena. It's on the New York Times bestsellers list. Uh, for those of you who don't know, John Cena released a children's book very recently. Uh, it is called The El- Elbow Grease. Uh, the book uh, follows the, the Cena mantra of Never Give Up. And uh, yeah, it debuted on the New York Times bestseller list. So good job for John Cena. Um, it's under children's bestsellers also. Like, I want to make sure I put that out there. It's not like he's not beating out John Grisham novels or nothing. But, hey, man, children's bestseller. If you pop that off for your first book, that is awesome. Who This guy is amazing for kids. And he doesn't want any, which I find very, very funny. But, yeah, he does not want to be a dad. He just wants to be a hero to kids all over the world. So, kind of don't go together, but I'll let it rock. Um, he will probably bring that up if I ever get to interview him. And he'll probably call me an asshole. Uh, Mia Yim is officially signed to NXT. Uh, for those of you who follow this show, we are huge fans of Mia. I should have it last year at the May Young Classic, but uh, hey, she came back for a second year. Um, it is official. Uh, 
those of you who watched the Mae Young Classic, there was a moment at the end of her match where Triple H came out and the fans said, sign Mia. Uh, now, you know she probably was already signed, but, um, you know, it, it's good. And I'm glad she is signed to the brand. So, uh, here, I will give you a little bit of her being told that she is going to be. Damn, ads, man. Ads, ads, ads. And Tony rolls through. Mia Carter again. Mia Yim. Oh! Puts her away. This is enough. No! Stacked her up and a kick out of two. So at the beginning they were just chanting, please sign Mia, please sign oh. Mia. Like it was like a huge thing, please sign Mia. And uh, and then I said, okay. So welcome the board. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, we're going to tell you anyways, but now they, they force the issue, so. <laughs> welcome aboard, okay? Congratulations on tonight. You're going to have a nice. Really good. Oh, crap, you guys are <laughs> <laughs> So the Blazing Batty is officially a part of NXT. So that is going down. We are very happy and pleased to announce that. Because uh, we are monstrous fans here at Ring Time Pro Wrestling. Uh, when we, yeah. Also, if you're on Twitter, follow her sister, uh, Chris Yim. Uh, I think she's Miss Yim too. Uh, just for fun. I don't know. Just something you guys should probably do. Uh... But she is a part of a class that includes Matt Riddle, who we have all know has been signed. Chelsea Green uh, is one of the new recruits. And uh, it's a group of seven that have all will headline. So uh, we're, we're happy with that. So I'm just looking at it and seeing it. who is anybody else. Uh, Luis Martinez, who's a 6'5", 270 guy from the NDC. Um... They got this guy, Jordan Oberlin, who's like seven foot three from Nigeria. So, that's going down. So, well, let's see what the new crop of NXT stars brings in. Um, I, we talked about the passing of Dick Slater. He passed away at 67 years old. Dick Slater was a very popular character in the Crockett and NWA territories. Uh, moved around um, the southern region. Probably the most famous thing about Dick Slater is that he punched out Sting early on in his career and probably stuck his head in the toilet. Uh, word on the street, it was a backstage incident. Uh, Dick Slater used to date Dark Journey, who is black, and her name was Dark Journey, but I'm not going to go into that too much. Um, she, is, you know, she's light skinned, but it, neither here nor there. Uh, her and Slater broke up. Slater didn't give her a ride to the next town. Uh, she asked Sting, could she ride with him? Sting, you know, was in a possible situation, but he said, hell yeah, I'll give you a ride to the town. So Sting and Journey walk to the building together, and somebody goes stooges off to Slater. Slater goes over to the Bayface locker room, and did nobody really stop him because I guess people didn't want to stop Dick Slater back then. So, yeah, that's kind of a Dick Slater story. But he's passed away at 67, which I think is kind of, you know, that's sad, man. Anyway, um, let's go SmackDown 1000. So, I thought it was a good show, but it could have been great. This is when you roll out a three-hour show. They did not do that. Why? I don't know. There's some dirt sheet things that I haven't read, so I'm not going to go into that. But, all in all, I thought it was a decent show. Uh, it was a lot of clips. It was a lot of, uh, you know, sl still photo slides. They didn't really do it up like Raw. They didn't bring in a lot of people. Uh, the TV show starts off with Truth TV. They are Truth and Carmella, which is, uh, I guess, uh, the McMahons all show up and they dance and that's fine. Uh, 
the first match of the night is the Usos. They defeated Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, who will both face each other at Crown Jewel for the WWE Championship. Um, they looked okay as a unit, but the Usos were more cohesive. Um, there was a miscommunication that caused those guys to hit each other, and the Usos end up winning the match. Um, we'll see how this storyline plays out between the two of them. Um, I think there's it's a good story to work on. Both of them came up similarly. They faced each other before in Ring of Honor. This is their first time facing off in the WWE. Uh, both took long roads to get to where they wanted to be. Daniel has a comeback story. Can he cap off the comeback? He has not been world champ in four years. Can he make it happen? He has spent three years trying to get back. He got back. In that last year, he's had a few different matches. Nothing's really materialized. Could this be it? AJ Styles, current king of the roost, the man who has dominated this brand for over the past year. Is it his time or is it not? We will see. Um, Evolution showed up on a show that they were never on. But hey, that is fine. Um, they trade Barb. Fred Orton talks about how guys are doing whatever and how he's still handling it. Uh, Batista says Triple H never beat him. And, you know... They, they face off for a little bit. Then everybody hugs. Randy teases a possible RKO. I, I guess... Here's the thing. I'm glad Batista showed up. I I think packaging him with Evolution kind of dilutes what Batista was to SmackDown. Batista probably was one of the most important champs on SmackDown. And he, he wrestles during a very solid era of the brand. So, post-2005... They do a swap, a champ swap. Cena goes to Raw shortly after winning the World Championship because Cena is on fire. Cena is the rocket ship. Like, it's not what we expected. Batista won the belt from Triple H at WrestleMania and probably one of the best buildups I've seen in a long time. And it it's, I'll say, yeah, before or after because it's been 13 years they haven't done it like this. But, you know, Batista. There was always the tension between him. He was a, one of the final guys in Evolution. It was going left and whatever. And then he wins the Royal Rumble. Triple H tries to convince him to go to SmackDown. Batista does not go to SmackDown to face JBL. He stays on Raw because he knew Hunter and Rick was plotting behind his back. Not a man. Beats Hunter. Gets the belt. Probably one of the best things that they've done. Fast forward. Uh, the brand extension, we got to swap champs because, once again, like I said, Cena is on fire. Like, this is the culmination of two years of Cena being built to be in that spot. Because um, once he won the U.S. title for Big Show in 2004, you knew, like, we were on our way. So, uh, Batista, I thought, held down, smacked down very well. Uh, his feud with Edge and his feud with The Undertaker, I think really catapulted the show which already was known as the wrestling show and I think his wrestling improved a great deal while he was on that brand and working with those guys um, but yeah that's I think he's one of the most important because he was the face of the company on that brand and he was the face of that brand for a good three to four years um the Miz defeat Rusev in the qualified match for the Crown Jewel. Rusev was screwed over by Aiden English. Aiden English ended up getting beat down after Rusev after a lot of kicked him in the balls. Da da da. But the Miz is going to Crown Jewel, and it will be in the tournament. Uh, Becky Lynch was savage in her promo on the Cutting Edge. Edge had the Cutting Edge. Um, he told Becky that, "Hey, maybe you should watch how you're doing this thing because." You, you might end up like me, and it's not going to be good, and it's, it's sad, and you know, you don't have no friends, and you probably shouldn't stab people in the back. And Becky said, I don't like myself, Ed, you're right. I love me. And I was like, yes. And man, when she told him, hey, don't hurt your neck, try to get out the ring again, savage, savage as fuck, man, whew. And uh, her and Charlotte had a little face off, a little tussle. This feud is hot, man. White hot. A lot of heat. And I love it. Becky is killing it as a heel. 
And uh, I think it's something she probably should stick with for a while. Uh, the Bar defeated the New Day uh, to win the SmackDown Tag Team titles. There was some help from the Big Show, which I thought was interested. Don't know where that's going, but it happened. Uh, Big Show came down to the ring when uh, the Bar kind of had the New Day already on the ropes. Kofi was laid out, and we were see what they were going to do. <sighs> I it was funny too because they were trying to sell it like you know Big Show came down to help. The new day, and it's like, why would he do that? And you kind of knew he was gonna choke slam Kofi, like that. You knew that was coming. Um, Rey Mysterio, in his return to SmackDown, defeated Shinsuke Nakamura to qualify for the uh, spot, the last spot, I think, at Crown Jewel. Uh, Rey looked very good, man, and I liked the match. I thought it was a good match, and I thought that they sold it where. It wasn't a bunch of extra stuff. Like, it wasn't nobody getting hit in the nuts. It wasn't nobody cheating. It wasn't nobody getting interference from somebody else. It was straight up one on one, two legends. And Nakamura counts as a legend, he was working in New Japan. And uh, let's see Ray looking good. And he's back, man. So let, let's be celebrate that. Uh, the Undertaker did a short promo at the end of. SmackDown just basically said, hey, y'all go rest in peace at Crown Jewel. Here's what I'll say about that. Uh, I think Undertaker was way more important to SmackDown. It probably should have had a little bit more time. What I'm going to do this week, I'm going to write an article, and I'm going to give you the most important people of SmackDown over this 1,000 episodes. Uh, and at the top of the list is Eddie Guerrero. Uh I'll go over to Lexi of Eddie and what he did and his comeback and what it meant to SmackDown. Eddie is a part of what I've dubbed the Golden Era of SmackDown, which we had a podcast about that that you can find in the archives, uh, which covers like 2002 to 2006. Um, a lot of great wrestling, and he was at the forefront of that. Uh, his character development was awesome during that time. So look out for that and look out for some more updates on the website. And with that, we are out. We will see you next week. Peace.